We said yesterday, and this is something we've said over and over, when a team goes home, their role players play really good. A couple nights ago, Lonnie Walker in L.A. was something. Lonnie Walker last night, nothing. Jared Vanderbilt, nothing. Rui, nothing. Yet the role players for the Warriors, Jordan Poole was under control. Gary Payton the second was very strong. As expected, when you play at home, the non-stars, your fifth best starter, your first three guys off the bench tend to grow and play well. You need the stars on the road because you're not going to get the role players on the road, and the Lakers' role players didn't deliver. Um, <clears throat> in fact, if you look at the box score, it really tells you the story. Field goal percentage, three-point percentage, free throw percentage, blocks, fast break, points in the paint, fouls, dead even. Rebounds, the smaller Warriors decisively won the rebounds. How? Energy, hustle, and intensity. It doesn't show up in an analytic. It doesn't show up in a box score. When you pin a champion against a wall, that box score tells you, that game, game, that game, that came down to the final shot. Warriors in control. They led by double digits in the fourth quarter for all but like 16 seconds. It is remarkable to watch, especially at home, although we saw the Warriors do it in Sacramento. You get pinned against the wall. We saw the Warriors do it last year in Boston, pinned against the wall, and they provide a punch. Draymond was a catalyst. Andrew Wiggins, easily his best game, finally Played with some assertiveness and aggressiveness. Jordan Poole played under control. So Steph Curry, who's been brilliant, like he was against Sacramento, Steph Curry got some support, which he often does at home from role players. So the Warriors clearly last night providing another example that the Warriors still have their fastball. But the question is, how many times do they have it in this series? Am I supposed to believe Andrew Wiggins, who played aggressively, will now go to L.A. and play aggressively again. It's not his personality. Can I get 20 from Draymond again? So last year in the finals, they gave us two big games like last night. Fastball, beginning to end. They gave us two of them against Sacramento. This is the first time, beginning to end, you got the Warriors fastball. The good news for the Lakers, though, and it's really good news, is Due to the Lakers' size, and we saw it last night, they score less spectacularly. Warriors look flashier. But the Lakers score more easily. They get those twos very easily. That's why at one point in the first half, the Warriors were humming, and it was tied at 54. But eventually, the Lakers' role players didn't provide the help that Steph's role players did. Golden State has no answers for the Lakers' size. So the only way for the Warriors to win these games, and you look at the rebounding totals, when they've out-rebounded the Lakers, i.e., they've been hyper-aggressive both ends. Offensive rebounds, crashing the boards, defensive rebounds. Only two games the Warriors have won. So you're going to go to L.A. now. You're not going to get that kind of effort probably from a Jordan Poole or a guy off the bench or Dante DiVincenzo. You're going to need Steph again to be great. But the key is you're going to need Wiggins to be great and you're going to need Draymond to be great because Steph will be. And I don't, I don't think the Warriors have any answer for the Lakers' size unless they're over-the-top aggressive, which they were last night, led by Wiggins. And I'll say this, that um, I felt like I was a spectator last night watching a champion, and I was wondering, is this their final punch? And I, Because when they give you this fastball, it's beautiful. The ball movement is beautiful. The shooting and the skill is beautiful. Lakers aren't pretty. Lakers win with defense, protecting the rim, AD, blocking six shots. They're not a pretty team. Darvin Ham wasn't a pretty player. He's a defensive guy. That's his mindset. That's how he coaches. That's his basketball DNA. Tough. Golden State's been the most beautiful basketball team on the planet for about a decade. Are we watching the end of it? Their last punch before they reboot. So I sat back. We have a luxury tax coming in now. You're not going to be able to have teams like this where guys play together forever. The only reason we got KD to the Warriors because of a goofy loophole. That's not going to happen again. So I, I, the only way for the Warriors to win, Andrew Wiggins, and I predicted he'd have a great series, 
Nope, he's had one great game. You're going to need that effort from historically non-aggressive Andrew Wiggins. You're going to need that two more times. We know Steph's going to be great. We know the role players for the Warriors in L.A. are not going to be great. It's going to come down to Andrew Wiggins and Draymond Green because Klay Thompson has had a good half. So I need Wiggins and I need Draymond to deliver A games like last night. They can do it. Big-time Hall of Fame-level talent can do it on the road. Role players can't. And we know Steph's going to be great. All right, so Anthony Davis got his head banged on, left in a wheelchair. They wanted to get him off his feet. Uh, The good news is it's nothing below the waist. It's no ankle. It's no knee. Uh, Chris Haynes reporting this morning, barring a setback, AD will be available tomorrow night. I would have gotten him off the floor end of the third. When the Warriors went up 16 points, 230 left third quarter, I I would have pulled LeBron and AD off. Instead, you got LeBron playing another nine minutes in the fourth quarter. He could have stopped at 30. Instead, he played 39. Those nine minutes matter. And AD's getting banged around and may have a concussion. The entire second half, the Warriors led by double digits, as I said earlier, for all but 16 seconds. Steph was in a zone every time they got close. 10, 11, 9, Steph at a 3, Steph at a 2. So you played LeBron nine minutes more than I would have, and you got AD hurt more than you should have. Uh, remember against the Grizzlies when uh, AD was grabbing his shoulder and saying, I can't feel my arm? This is the longest stretch AD has provided the Lakers without missing a game. This is the longest stretch. So it's a lot of cross-your-finger stuff, and we know Biggs and B gets banged up. We know this. We saw Giannis in the playoffs get banged up. We watched Memphis's big Stephen Adams fall apart. You got to protect your bigs, and sometimes protecting them is you get down big third quarter. They have an injury history. Just take them out. I would have done it. They didn't. So you cross your fingers. AD is ready to go. But you know his body. It just you know big guys get hurt early. They get hurt often. Embiid's not going to get healthier. Stephen Adams not going to get healthier. AD's not going to get healthier. Giannis is not going to get healthier over the next seven to eight years. So the injury report comes out later today. They use independent doctors. Chris Haynes is reporting this morning, somebody I trust, uh, that it, he is ready to go barring a setback. Remember, though, remember, they're not beating the Warriors the next two games without AD. They're not. They had a lead on the Suns a couple of years ago, and LeBron was closer to his prime. AD goes down, series unravels. So, I mean, let, let's be honest. The entire series for the Warriors has been trying to manipulate Anthony Davis. It's not about LeBron. They're not game planning for LeBron at all. They're game planning for Anthony Davis. He leads the team. LeBron was hoping he would have started this three years ago. It took a while, but now he is the team. When LeBron plays well, it helps. When AD plays great, they don't lose. So as of now, the good news is AD will be available. My gut feeling, I do not know what the line is. My gut feeling, if AD plays, Lakers come back home and win because I do not believe Andrew Wiggins can provide that type of aggressive, assertive style two more games. I think we got Andrew Wiggins a very rare glimpse of what he can be on his best. And I don't think Draymond's dropping 20 in L.A. and then 20 back in the Chase Center. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.